Welcome to Nugget 164 with Steve Groman. We will be returning to our National Park series in this nugget. And today we'll be talking about a national park that I'm willing to bet that most people have never heard of. It's called Capulan Volcano National Monument, and it's in the state of New Mexico. The reason that we wanted to go to Capulan, it is one of the few places that you can actually walk on a volcano and walk into the center of it. So we found a campground. Do you want to tell them what happened when we got to the campground? So I walk into Pay, and I notice there are Christian people who run the place. And in talking with the, the lady behind the counter, they, they have a, a community Bible study, a town-wide Bible study. I said, well, that's really neat. You just do it right there at the RV park. She said, yeah. So what time does it start? I don't remember if it was 7 or 7.30. But anyway, I said, is anybody welcome? She said, yeah, you can show up. I go back to the motorhome and walk in, and I said, uh, we're going to a Bible study tonight. And you thought... <laughs> I just probably looked at him like I'm looking at him right now. Like, we're doing what tonight? <laughs> that wasn't what we were thinking of. But anyway, but we did go. We went and, and it was an interesting Bible study. It was good. It was we good. have never done that. All the campgrounds we've stayed. No, we've and what's done. funny nope, is we're always ne- parked at a church and you're doing a Bible study. But now we go to a campground and yeah, we're going, we're going to, to a, a Bible, Bible study. study. And the thing is, we've been to several campgrounds and uh, we've never had anybody... Do a Bible study at the campground. No. Like but that. if so, you ever anyway. are staying at the campground near Capulin, you'll have to Go check to it Bible out study. anyway. It was fun. If you're on the right day. As the brochure says, did you ever wish you could walk on a volcano? Perhaps even venture down inside the crater? Capulin Volcano National Monument offers four trails that vary in difficulty and length. And we did all of the trails, and we first took the short crater vent trail that steeply descends 105 feet to the bottom of the crater, which is the plugged vent of Capulin Volcano. Then we took the Crater Rim Trail. It's a paved one-mile trail that goes around the rim of the volcano, and it offers spectacular views of the surrounding landscape. And the trail skirts the rim in a series of moderate to steep ascents to the peak's highest point at 8,182 feet, and ends with a steep descent to the parking lot. That's for sure. It was steep. But, you know, that stuff is fun. As you're you're reading that, I'm just kind of thinking, because the view is amazing. It's good exercise walking up and down that stuff. I'll tell you what, out that mountain air, you ain't kidding. It is fun. And just the fact that we're walking on a volcano is neat because that thing at one point was a very dangerous place to be. (laughs) (laughs) And yet here we are walking on it. It's just amazing when you realize what this thing actually is that now we're walking on. The real drawing card at Capulin is the sensational scenery from top of the crater, where four states can be seen. From the rim trail, you can gaze east to Sierra Grande, floating out in the plains, 10 miles in the distance, a shield volcano rising to 8,720 feet. You can also see Black Mesa in Oklahoma, the highest point in that state at 4,973 feet elevation. The Texas Panhandle is in sight, and out to the west, more cones dot the landscape of New Mexico. On the farthest western horizon, the glorious Sangre de Cristo Mountains, sometimes snow-capped, reach into Colorado. They claim that this one's extinct and that because it's a cinder cone, well, we'll read what they say about it. Capulan Volcano saw a brief moment of glory about 60,000 years ago. Well, maybe not. Probably not. Probably not. The volcano itself is now extinct, but the elegant symmetrical cinder cone created by the eruption so inspired people that it became a small but significant national monument in 1916. So this thing's been a, a treasure for a while. It's been one, it was actually one of the first. Yes. When it became a national monument, Capulin was characterized as a striking example of recent extinct volcanoes of great scientific and especially geologic interest. Indeed, the actual date of Capulin's eruption has been a matter of interest among geologists for quite some time. In the 1950s, it was assigned an age of 10,000 years, a relative date based on Capulin-emitted lava flow that was incorrectly correlated to the Folsom archaeological site 15 miles away. More recent absolute dates obtained from chemical analyses indicate that Capulin's eruption was older, 56,000 to 62,000 years. And because cinder cones form as one-time events, it's fairly certain that Capulin is now extinct. This is an example of how they changed their mind on time frame. They do. They changed their mind and it's taught as a factual thing just the way that reads even. It's taught as a fact now, the numbers that they have. But we always have to remember that all those dates have assumptions built into them. I know we've covered uh, radiometric dating on other nuggets and we've covered extensively in our meetings. They have an assumption. They have an assumption that there was no contamination. They have an assumption of a starting time. They have an assumption of the, the steady rate of decay. When they're using chemical analysis and such and they're dating the things, whether it's a rock or whether it's a a petrified stick, a log of some sort. It doesn't matter what it is. There are assumptions built into 
to that. And in this case, we're talking tens of thousands of years. But of course, we know it was just either at the flood or since the flood is when these things happen. The rim trail ascends to the highest point on the volcano, 8,182 feet. Walkers stopping to catch their breath can appreciate the fact that the southwest winds blew the cinders higher on the northeast side of the crater. Fragments of still molten lava fell onto the rim and crater, fusing into what is called spatter. This coating has protected Capulin from eroding too quickly, as have shrubs and trees that have gained root holds. The rusty boulders are splotched with chartreuse, lichens, and skunk bush. Gamble oak and chokeberry, which is Capulin in Spanish, are bonsaied by the wind. Speaking of skunk bush, can we include a picture in this nugget? This is our friend, Oreo. <laughs> How you doing, Oreo? How are you doing? Say hi to the people. Hi, people. <laughs> this is a real live sky. Can you believe it? The short trail down into the 415 foot deep crater puts you face to face with the volcano's rubble filled vent. And like at most national parks, there are signs all over. And this particular one says the Raton Clayton Volcanic Field. And it explains all the different geological features that you're looking at from this distance. But the sad part is it says the Clayton phase, the second period of eruptions, occurred three to two million years ago at the eastern edge of the field. With this park series and many of the nuggets that we do, we want to show you these beautiful and exciting places. But we want to help you to understand what to do when you see these signs. Right, and not just show them to you, but actually encourage you to go to see what is available in this country. There are a lot of really, really neat things to see and observe and learn, uh, but of course they're all going to be from an evolutionary perspective, which we understand that. It's not a, you know, we don't have to get mad about it, but, but yeah, we do have to be aware of it because even our young ones, when they see this kind of stuff, whether they walk it themselves or they see it in a, in a textbook somewhere, it makes an impression on them. I was talking to a father and son at the meeting last night. He was just desperate for help because the people that are speaking into his son's life are all evolutionist yeah. and the son likes rocks he likes fossils and he likes dinosaurs and that really opens yourself up to right. being filled with evolutionary and he's a neat kid. ideas the dad needs to get information exactly and he needs to become informed on how to teach his child himself what's what on these topics and again there's a lot of good history at these places and as you can see by these signs this one's the settlement and discovery and then this one talked about the history of how the monument was made and that's always interesting to know the people that were involved and cared enough about a particular place to fight the fight to get the different parks set up and again i want to encourage people to make another comment i know we've discussed it before also but when you do these kinds of hikes when you go on this be sure you have water Take water at least a granola bar right <laughs> even though you can see the car even on this That's trail right. we were huffing and puffing it, it, it can burn you out be sure you're prepared for it and, but enjoy it and proper shoes very very because it was steep what goes and up sun must protection. come down sun protection it's, it was steep getting back down to the parking lot but it is fun to do it is, it is exciting to hike places to see what we have in this country to be able to all right well thank you